It's been a long old journey. We're up in West Yorkshire, Weatherby. It is a beautiful day. We're here at All 3D Labs, a brand new company. They've made a huge investment. You might be able to guess what they've invested in, but let's go and find out. Not only that, we're going to put our newest recruit, Tom Skubala, to the test. <laughs> So we're here at all 3D Labs, and I'm going to put Colin to the test on his knowledge of 3D printers. Right, you're the new kid in the block. I'm not happy the way you've turned that around, because I was supposed to put you to the test. But I've learned loads here today. Huge commitment from Mark and the team at all 3D Labs, working closely with Matt Shearer, HP, and Dimension. So first of all, what is this? I'll do the questions, right? This is a build unit. Essentially, they're filling this up with powder. Different types of 3D printing, but we'll come to that later. So the powder goes in this build unit and walk this way. In fact, what it does, that's over there, but it goes in here and it's filled up in this system here. And this is the, post, the processing system. So from there, nice and simple, it goes to, guess what? Printer. Exactly, the 3D <laughs> printer. So they've got Sorry. a HP. 5,200. I was going to do a big reveal, but someone's ruined it. So look, <laughs> we've got it here, and don't tell Mark, who owns the company. Hopefully, I won't break it. So you've got the 3D printer here, control unit here, very simple. So people will send in their files, and it's an SL... STL file. Oh, I keep getting it wrong, I know. Sorry about that, Tom. I'm, <laughs> I'm learning all the time. STL file, it's as simple as that. You don't need to be a design expert. I mean, obviously, Mark and the team are, but you just send in your files into the system here, and then into the working envelope. So you've got your you build your unit into there, lots of powder, and then I'm making it look heavy. That's because it is, honestly. And then into here, you can see, I won't put my finger in it because I'll probably damage it, but you've got your powder here. So what happens is, powder comes from a roller over here, and then the unit comes across here, and then what you'll have is your fusing agent, which will then go onto here, heated up to about 160 degrees C, the fusing agent is black, so it doesn't need to be as hot as other processes. And then it'll build up layer by layer by layer. Well, this will move down layer by layer by layer. 390, no, 380 by 290 by 380. So a big working envelope. But this is isotonic. Isotropic. I told, I, that's what I said. I said isotropic. All right, isotropic. But what does isotropic mean? What it means is different styles of 3D printing. Now, with the X and the Y, fairly rigid. But in the Z, it's not. But with isotropic, it is because it's actually fusing the powder together, so it's building a lot, lot stronger. So you've got all the different components in there. You can have one component, or you can have, well, obviously depending on the size, hundreds of components. And the software, what it'll do, it'll work it all out and build it in the best way and fit it all the best way in that working envelope. So you could, like I say, you could have one component here, one here, all around, I won't go through them all, but hundreds of components, it'll build them up, set that off running, press the button, close it up, obviously, and then about nine, 10 hours later, as I say in Germany, voila, you have your components. There you go. So what you've got then, obviously it's very hot, about 160 degrees, back to the processing unit. So come on, this way. You need to be quizzing me more, Tom. Come on, come on. Okay, Tom, I'm wheeling over my build unit. It's full of hot, hot, hot parts. And not because it's the English summer, 40 degree days and things like that. As I said, about 160 degrees, it needs to cool off. How long does it take to cool off? About nine hours. So what they do, in general is the guys at Matchura HP will give them two build units. So fill up one, get it printing. So one's running, one's calling, Absolutely. the machine never stops. Exactly, so not spindles turning, but printed printing. Now, I've got to ask, have you ever seen one of these before? It's a Hoover, isn't it? <laughs> um, not in my house, no, definitely not, of course not. But yeah, what you're doing is, you've got your build unit, it goes in here, you've got your powder, you've got your components all printed in it. You're gonna to have to use a bit of imagination, not my hand wafting around, but then you get your hoover and you're sucking out the powder essentially. Now you're thinking, well, what a waste, all that powder. But what, what you do is you're reusing that powder. So you're recycling about 80% of the powder. So a very cost-effective solution. You're taking the parts out, popping them on here, once they've cooled, got lots of dust, but you've got a big filter system there so that it's health and safety. Don't worry about it. You're not going to get harmful dust or anything like that. So really, you only need to wear gloves exactly. while operating this? That's it. And well, you say operating, it wouldn't know to that, as we alluded to earlier. But then you've got your finished parts, but not quite finished because you need to go on to the next process. So walk this way. Come on. Over here. So, so now, what are, we, what are we doing over here? We are power shot seeing it, which means, in layman's terms, essentially, you are 
giving it a final clean if you want to. It depends on what sort of finish you want on your component. So the PowerShot C will be, is essentially like, a, in very basic terms, a washing machine. Again, something I don't have in my house. <laughs> don't say it. Is this all automatic or can you run it in manual mode? Ah, well, you've got two different options. Depending on the size of the component, smaller components, pop it in there like a washing machine. And what it's doing, it's blasting really fine medium. You can see there, it's like a dust at the component to give it that surface finish. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, that's an insole. I've just worked that out. I've been here for four hours. I didn't know what it was. There you go. So that's your surface finish after it's been cleaned. Okay, so blasting it with that fine dust, or if it's a larger component, it's going to get damaged in that tumbler. So you can drop this down. There's some actual hand parts here, or units for gloves. It's not very technical, I know, but that's what you do. So you can, you can manipulate that large part yourself. So these could potentially be your finished components there, but you might want a different surface finish. So what you could do is you go to the next one, the Power Shot S. So walk this way. And, here you can and see as we were saying, this is the... This is the manual I'm mode. Doing, I'm doing all the discussions, but you can see in the background, Mark and Lee, Lee from Matsura and Mark were saying, you know, big investment, big commitment, but these guys have been absolutely essential to what they do because you're going to have the occasional issue. It's about how you support them. They had an issue with some parts. Friday afternoon, they needed new parts, they needed new powder, all sorted by Monday. So absolutely brilliant service in that time of thing because you can see, big, big commitment. But anyway, moving on. So PowerShot S, yes, I can manipulate, manipulate if I can say it. Big parts there with my gloves or into there, into the tumble, tumble dryer, well, washing machine. And this is a slightly thicker medium, should we say, so you can see, I don't know if the camera, hopefully the camera can pick that up. That's about half a mil, those beads there. So blasting at the component, and there you go. You've got a slightly different surface finish. And again, hopefully you can pick that up. But what is also key, I'm gonna bring the camera, sorry, and I didn't finish it there, but that's not, <laughs> we'd like to keep in working. That is perfect example of what you can do with 3D printing. So that part is, and that cog, I'm gonna call it a cog gear, is, Actually, um, that's, that's all printed as one, it's not being put together. Absolutely, so that's a great example of a component you get with 3D printing. So, you want that surface finish, fine, but you might want a slightly different surface finish. So that's where you go on to your Dimension Power Fuse S, so a different process. So what's happening here is, and this is a great example, you've got the component there, you can see the surface finish. What they're actually doing is they're blasting, well, they're putting a vapour over the material and they're melting the surface. So essentially they're making that waterproof. And so, well, I'd say and, so if you're washing parts down and you're going underwater submerging for whatever reason, that is perfect for this type of component. And it also gives you the sort of, more like injection mould finish. Absolutely. So there, there you have it. So that's some great examples of, well, great example before I trash a joint of what they're manufacturing here. It's, and it's not just about one-off prototypes, it's batch runs as well. Not the big batch runs like you do with your injection moulding, but definitely batch runs. And there's no limit to your imagination. Well, there might be to yours. Oh, that's harsh when oh. it's on. Second saw for chips oh. and we're giving them green. But I'm, we need to see this component. So come walk this way. <sighs> Sorry, Tom, about that. So here we have it. Some great examples. Now, pick one. Perfect. So any keen cyclist wants to shave at least half a second off their 20 kilometre time and how would they do that? But you still get the strength, as you would with a foam helmet. Absolutely, so you 3D printed that, and you got, it's not honeycomb as such, but it's, I don't but know. But it's still strong. Super strong, super rigid, but super, super light. So great example, 3D printing. I'm afraid we're not gonna get this on your head, though. Oh, you can don't, try, don't, but... don't start giving me grief, don't start giving me grief. Now this is a great example of 3D printing, and let me, with my dexterous skills, there you go, so you can spin that around, all printed in one. So, so no assembly, no, that's, how it comes off the printer. That's it. So I might nick that to go on the Christmas tree, but don't tell Mark that anyway. That saved me a couple of quid. Go on. So those, so different materials. So I th just, to, just to check, Mark is using PA12, so fairly rigid, but also you do get that flexibility, and that's a great example there. And that, the only difference with that is how it's been designed. Exactly. So same material, but the design is slightly different, so it gives you that flexibility or that rigidity. So you've got some great examples of different components here. So... There you have it. That's Tom's second swarf of chips. How's it been? It's been all right, yeah. Yeah? Let's wait for the third one. But <laughs> this is a great example. So all 3D labs working closely with Matsura, HP, and Dimension. It's a huge commitment, a huge investment. And they wouldn't have done it without the support of Lee and the guys and making not only one or small batch runs, prototypes, but larger batch runs as well. Yeah. That's it, nice and simple. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the show and <laughs> learned a bit more about 3D printing.